So here I have my Domino server running on my machine. I have notes going as well. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my contacts out and export those to a CSV file. In TDI, I've already opened up the notes integration config, and this XML is available for download from the tdi-users.org site. I have three connectors already pre-configured. I have a couple set up to DIOP. One of them using HTTP first to request the IOR string or the information about the DIOP setup in my server. Then I've got another one set up where I've simply used a browser to get a hold of the string from the web server or from my um, the web server in Domino and just pasted the IOR string in here. And that means it doesn't need to go to port 80 using HTTP to request this. And finally, I have a local client set up. This is the one I'll be using first. This one allows me to reach into my own names NSF and my local databases. So I'll start by creating my first assembly line and we'll just call this export contacts. Then I'll drag in my client connector and let's set up the document selection so that way it's only going to be people. Now, most connectors would allow me to connect and then to step through the data here directly from the development environment. This connector doesn't let me do that, unfortunately, uh, at least not with a local client connection. So instead, I'm going to have it read in all of the attributes. And then just for a test, we'll take a look and see what's coming through. Now, I can add a script component here and just tell it to print out the full name. But I've already got one set up in my library, so I'll just drag that in. And it's a simple script that just logs a message and then asks the work entry, which is the container that carries all the data in the assembly line, to display the value of the full name attribute as a string. And then we run it by pressing this button. So here are the list of my contacts. Now, because we can't discover the schema directly in the development tool, that's why I mapped in all the attributes. That means everything that comes in will be displayed here. I'm also going to drop in another script, which is going to display all the attributes sorted. Now, we don't need this for every single one of my contacts. They have the same fields populated. So I'm going to stop the assembly line after this, which means it's not going to go back up here and keep repeating for every entry that's found or every document that's found. So let's try this one again. Now I'm getting an idea of what kind of attributes are coming through. And I see there are a lot of attributes here that start with a dollar sign. These are going to be internal notes attributes, and I don't want those as well. So I have another little script that removes these. And I'll just drag this here and drop it at the top. So that means I can use this now to write out to a CSV file. To do that, I'm going to disable the stop. And the display of all the people, uh, all the attributes for these entries. And then I'm going to add another connector, this time a file connector. And we'll call this write CSV. Leave it in add mode. Set it up to write out to contact CSV, and then choose the CSV parser. And finally, we tell this component which of the attributes to write out. And I'm going to just tell it to write everything out. And then we run it again. So let's check our results by opening up the CSV file. Now since I didn't specify a path, it's going to end up in my solution directory. And if we sort this by the modified date timestamp, here it is.
And let's just open this up in, in Notepad. So here's my contacts exported as CSV. If I needed to control the order in which they were printed or they're written to the file, I do that from the parser. And I, I can configure that by simply listing the file names in the order I want them. And so forth. Now as I mentioned before, the notes connector using local client connection won't let me discover schema. But that's not a problem once I've written it out to another format which I can read with a different connector. So here are the attributes that we just wrote. And this comes in handy if I want to map this out to some other format. For example, to vCard. So let's just do that quickly now as well. We'll add a new connector. Again, a file connector. We'll call this write vCard. And I'll just put these in contacts vCards. For the parser, I'll choose the, the simple line reader, which is also a line writer. Now this will read and write to an attribute called line. I'm going to call this attribute vCard. Now I have to map to this, map the actual vCard to this attribute. And I'm going to use expression mapping because this will allow me to copy and paste in the literal string that I want to write and then put in substitution tokens. So here I found on Wikipedia an example of a vCard version 2.1. Uh, so we'll just copy this and paste it in here. And then I have to start replacing the data itself with TDI expression tokens. This will be from the work object, again our bucket which is carrying data. This will be the last name. Here we want the first name, etc. all the way down. Now I've already done this, so I'm going to just drag in an attribute map that I've prepared. and then remove the one that I just added, so I get this inherited one instead. And now all of these tokens are in place. So let's disable our CSV writer. And then we'll go up to the configuration of the assembly line and limit the number of objects or documents that our iterator connector here is going to read to simply two. Then we'll try running this one. Now if we go to our TDI solution directory and refresh the view, we should find our file. This looks good, but we'd really like to get one vCard file per person. So let's go back and change that. In TDI we go back to our assembly line to the data flow tab, and then the connection tab for the configuration of our write vCards connector. And the first thing we have to do is to, to tell TDI that we want a different file name each time. And I'll do that again by using an expression. This time, the substitution map will say that we want to use the value of the full name attribute and then tag on the literal vCard extension. And then we have to tell the connector that we want it to initialize and terminate every time so a new file is opened and written to. Now let's give it a shot. Again, we go back to our solution directory, refresh this, and we now have a V card for each one. And that completes this example. In the next one, we'll take a look at importing contacts.